What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of People Management Digest, the official podcast of Great Place to Work Canada. My name is Lucas Pesa. Today, I'm looking forward to this conversation and bringing it to you guys. We are joined by Lauren Rubis, the Chief Evangelist at ATB. Um, we're not only excited to have him on just because of his experience and his knowledge and that kind of thing, but um, he will be joining us at our conference taking place on April 25th, so we're really looking forward to having him. Today, our conversation is going to be about how to advance the culture uh, and how to advance organizational culture and trends and structures. Um, Lauren brings up a lot of great points throughout this. He's got a lot of experience to draw on, so uh, I think you guys are really going to benefit from it. He's got a really good quote that you know I'll, I'll share with you right now, just in case um, you don't make it all the way to the end. But uh, make sure you do stick around, though. There's a lot of great content. The uh, idea that I want to share with you guys is that culture is not an end, but it's a foundation. So that's uh, one of the main points that uh, really resonated with me, especially near the end of the conversation. Um, Lauren's got a lot of great insights, and I think, again, you guys will really benefit from it. Uh, I won't take take up any more time, so enjoy the podcast. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the podcast. Today, I'm joined by Lauren Rubis. Lauren, how are you doing today? Great, Lucas. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. So uh, today, what we'll be discussing is the advancement of organizational culture, uh, kind of what that means and how organizations can start thinking about it as they implement uh, their own uh, people management strategies. So one question that I wanted to open up with you is when it comes to advancing organizational culture, how should that even be defined by an organization? There's a lot of different ways that organizations will even de define their own learning objectives or their own HR objectives or people management objectives. So when it comes to advancing cor corporate or organizational culture, what does that look like? How would you define that? So I think, first of all, everybody has to appreciate that whether you're intentional about it or not or however uh, the, uh, you, you think about it, every organization has a culture. Uh, there's a set way of behaving and expectations. There's a there's some purpose that lingers through the organization uh, uh, with great you know with uh, uh, and then there's a set of behaviors that sort of define the essence of, of of an organization and that that becomes the culture. So my argument is that the more clear and the more intentional and more defined one is about uh, the culture, the easier it is to fully have everyone who makes that culture up to thrive, to contribute to, to drive that desired essence of what the organization is. And I think uh, to know whether you're advancing it or not, or, or this notion of advancing, is the degree that people who make up the culture, in our case we have 5,300 team members, is the degree that every single person has a personal emotional connection to the why, to the purpose of the organization, and to its uh, intended, uh, either explicit or implicit values, its behaviors, its desires that it wants to, and it, and it rewards and appreciates, uh, throughout the organization. So that's what I think. Is there a, to what extent do people see themselves in the story or the purpose and in the values? Well, I mean, and that's one question that I was curious to learn more about actually is when it comes to helping each person establish a connection to the organization and helping them become incorporated in the overall story of where the company is going or the narrative of the organization, that kind of thing. How can organizations make that connection in terms of making people feel a part of the narrative or part of the story of the organization? Or how can an organization almost help an individual find the connection between their personal goals and the organizational goals? So, and I'll talk a little bit maybe uh, by example of what we do in our case. Yep. When we... Uh, uh, concluded a couple years ago that we needed to refresh or refine our purpose in a way that was more accessible, uh, that we needed to up our game around having people see themselves in what we call our st our purpose, which we call uh, we call our story, and it has 94 words to it, is we stopped the entire organization uh, and had a full conversation with every single person for an entire day around the story. And, and, and we also had a conversation about clearly stated uh, values, which we call our 10 ATVs. And we took a day out and we told stories, and we had people at every level, everybody participated, mm -hmm. tell stories. 
about how we make the story true and how they personally show up in the story and in in our ATBs. And on a continual basis, every new hire that we bring on, um, the CEO and I spend a full day with every, at approximately 60 to 70 people a month. Wow. We bring, we spend fully engaged on, on the story and the ATVs and how they see themselves in the story. You have to do it with that intentionality. Yeah, and and you mentioned that uh, the the ninety four words is sort of the it sounds almost like a mission statement or a sort of mission or, or vision statement. You no, know, I've been around long enough for the forty years of my career to, to see the evolution of you know vision mission statements. This this is not a new concept. It's been around since the beginning. That organizations you know anytime people collect it together for the beginning of time. Uh, the essence, though, of it is uh, around how clear your why is your purpose, and why do you wake up in the morning? Why do you come to this organization? What is the foundation of everything that you do? What connects everything you do functionally to the main, to the, to the, to the, uh, to the why? And it could be called the mission, or it could be called the purpose, and, and however you describe it, uh, whatever it is, it's not fluff. It's a, it is the foundation of the essence of the contribution of every single person who makes up the institution. Yeah, for sure. And when it comes to, when organizations are trying to understand if they need to be advanced or adjusted, so going back to the overall uh, topic about advancing organizational culture in general, how should organizations know they need to be advanced or adjusted. Where? What are the sort of cues that organiza- an organization should take? How do you sort of get uh, a pulse check on whether or not the employees feel connected to the organization or feel connected to the sort of notion of why they wake up in the morning, why they come to that particular uh, job? So how can a- an organization almost get a bit of a pulse on how the organization feels at a certain time and how connected it is to the overall mission? So I think... Um First, the, the, first is the, at, the, at the top of the house, the leadership has to have this, this absolute thirst for honesty around where the organization's really at. And it, and it has to have both well, sort of a quantitative and qualitative sense for it. So let's just talk about it on, on, on the qualitative sense. Um, if people feel like when you ask people around, you know, what is the purpose of the organization? And how they see themselves showing up. That should be a very, uh, consistent and easy answer for people to make. They shouldn't struggle around. There shouldn't be a whole bunch of different answers to it. And it shouldn't be a mumbling, stumbling kind of, uh, a, a narrative response to, 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 to uh, the connection to that. So that's one sort of the qualitative. And if you ask people to describe, you know, what's the essence of what are the values, you know, how do you, you know, what, what are people, what is people, what, people, what behavior does the organization really respect and honor and recruit to and celebrate? They ought to be able to clearly describe those as well. So that's on the qualitative side. There has a personal emotional description. And you've got to be able to have things like the Great Place to Work survey. You've got to say, you know, you know, on the quantitative side, where are we in our trust index? Where are we in our engagement survey? Uh, you know, where are we in terms of retention? Where are we in terms of attracting you know, uh, you know, thousands of people. Like we have fifty thousand unsolicited and solicited uh, applications to join ATB for you know uh, five thousand jobs. So we have. So that, I mean that's so that's just one uh, consideration. And then I think if you're not growing and improving on the customer metrics and the financial metrics, I think there's something inherently and systemically wrong with the culture slash business model um, or it, or or there's an opportunity there's always an opportunity to advance it at the essence of it is a thirst for the executive the leadership to know where are we and then how do we move forward and and that's something that i think a lot of organizations are, are consistently trying to wrestle with and figure out is you know you know because you mentioned obviously the one of the things that indicates the, I guess, improvement rate is, you know, the number of people who express their desire to want to work at the organization, that kind of thing. So um, in terms of, I guess, just to sort of build on on the concept of knowing when an organization can understand where how they need to advance or how they need to adjust in order to improve, 
what are some of the quantifiable, and you touched on it a little bit, but what are some of the measurables when it comes to monitoring how an organization is advancing? So how can an organization almost keep track and establish KPIs around how they're doing in terms of their improvement of their advancement of their culture? I think um, I think the one thing, uh, sort of at, at just the precursor, the, the prologue, um, is 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 you, you better want to always advance to begin with. So advancing and the idea of moving forward, um, I think I think that you can never really be complacent and satisfied that the culture is quote we're satisfied with where we are relative to. You know, making it uh, making it a richer uh, contributing part and essence of the of the success of the company. And when you do that, I think you need to have um, you need to have this incredible kind of listening post. Like if you, you use the metaphor maybe of a driverless car, like you and I have our senses and and we use we you know we try to keep those senses sharp when we drive. A driverless car, if I understand correctly, has about seventy thousand sensors on the car. And I think great organizations start to think about how do I have 70,000 sensors metaphorically where we're listening all the time around how we do, how we're doing with each other, with our customers, with all our other stakeholders. And that starts to inform you. And that's why things like, you know, when you do the trust survey, the great place, and I'm not just making this pattering comments for, for a great place to work. I mean, I just believe in you've got to know where you are on the trust side of the business or you've got to have a whole series of listening posts around where are we doing and then all that data informs you around typically you know where you what you need to do to advance the culture the customer data will tell you that if you're not growing and 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 keeping and, and acquiring and retaining customers typically it's the relationship between the people and the acquisition process and retention process where there's something broken broken or that implies that there's something missing in uh, underlying in the culture, and that's that also informs you then where to put your attention around advancing. For sure, yeah, and you know you made some interesting points there, and and one thing I wanted to sort of follow up on is mm-hmm. obviously organizations when they're trying to figure out how they need to advance, and even before they decide how they're going to measure the impact that they have uh, as they start to advance their culture, they almost have to understand a couple of things even before that starts. So in your opinion, why do some organizations face difficulty adjusting to all the things that we've been talking about? So when uh, it comes Because I, oh. I think one of the big things is that uh, at the at the at the uh, most highest incentive, financial incentive level, uh, there's so much short term thinking in organizations is that quarterly uh, you know, call with the analysts is, you know, how the stock is performing on a very short term basis and you've got you know, a lot of compensation plans for executives where there's a very short-term kind of, you know, keep the short, you know, try and, and optimize each quarter. Um, and and I understand the practicality of that. The end that goes along with that is that advancing your culture is a very, is a systemic process. It's a long-term process. There, 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 you know, a lot of times people are looking for that silver bullet. There's something we just can do, right? And that's going to kind of, uh, however, when you really kind of create a phenomenal culture, it, it, every element that you think that you, that you put into the organization from a, your people system to your, to your technical systems to everything, they start to overall to be anchored in by your purpose and your values and they connect to your strategy and they work systemically. And so you've got to commit to a parallel initiatives that continually move forward and that takes long-term thinking and systemic thinking, and that's not resident in a lot of organizations. Yeah, and especially because there is always such, you know, demand to produce results, not only for, you know, big organizations to meet their, their targets, but just so that the organization can, as you know, we were discussing a little bit earlier, can continue to grow, uh, can continue to, to innovate and do all the things that are necessary for it to remain competitive in the marketplace. What are some, I mean, just to sort of build on that a little bit, you mentioned that, uh, you know, long-term, um, you know, a commitment to long-term thinking, parallel thinking is, um, is extremely important. What are some examples of, I guess, long-term organizational culture advancement goals that, that you've seen that have, that have been successful? Well, I think, um, 
You know, for example, uh, if you just take a very, uh, some people might consider trivial, um, but maybe kind of a, uh, a small ribbon that could flow through an organization like a reward and recognition system. So we have a platform for recognition at ATB uh, where it's a social media type platform where you get to go on and, and recognize team members who, uh, in your opinion, move the organization forward by applying the value. So the 10 ATBs are there. You get to identify the behavior, attach it to an ATB, and acknowledge and recognize the teammate. We'll have, you know, on a really good month, 5,000 of us will share 30,000 recognitions. Um, well, that takes an investment. That is, it could be easy. It's easy for someone, maybe easy for someone to say, well, you know, let's cut that out, or that's that not important, or you know, we spend a million and a half dollars on that a year. Do we really we need to be to be doing that? And so, there's a whole series of things that, uh, you know, that everything from your recruitment process, the whole people journey, everything that uh, that uh, you build into your your organization. Uh, you need to think about it in terms of it, that how it kind of connects together systemically and, and your long-term commitment to, you know, sort of advancing it and always improving on it moving forward. The great thing about these elements is that they start to work together over a period of time, and that creates momentum. The secondary part of this thing is that leaders have to be great at connecting the dots. So you, it is able to, you are able to talk about agile or or customer experience, or exponentiality, or you name the current trends, and connect them and bring them back in in an understandable and accessible way for team members to know how that translates to the company's purpose and its and its values, and that keeps things together, and it doesn't then appear that the organization is always chasing up you know a purple squirrel or the next new shiny object, and so you. Leadership has to work hard to connect the dots and let people see the long-term flow. For sure. And yeah, I mean, that's one of the challenges of, of, you know, leadership in general is, you know, having on top of having to meet all the deliverables that leaders will typically have to make, because typically these people are very, you know, uh, high executives and they have, you know, their own um, technical deliverables that they have to answer to their managers for and that kind of thing. But in and amongst all that, there is still the added burden of and the added necessity sometimes of having to think critically about how the team is operating and how the team's performance can be optimized and what sort of internal changes may have to be made in order to allow that to happen. So as you know, in these leadership positions, and I'm sure you can you know, you know relate to this, there's always the sort of dual task of managing your personal deliverables to your to the organization and to uh, your direct uh, managers while still making sure that the team around you is, is operating as, you know, at an optimal level. Yeah. And, you know, the sucker punch in this whole thing, Lucas, is that a lot of leaders start to think about culture as an and, as opposed to a foundation or a part of. And leaders have got to be able to um, think and work and apply uh, their leadership uh, in layers. They, they've got to be able to connect dots and be at various layers of the stratosphere around leadership at the very same time, and if your head can't think that way, then I think if you if you want to be just linear or incremental, then don't bother being a leader. Uh, and so don't think about oh geez I've got to be I've got to I've got to now think about the culture or the or the uh, values of the company. That has to, you know that thinking has to soak in to the business model and to the obviously you've got to get results. No results, no job. However, thinking about culture and, and advancing the culture as an and, as opposed to a foundational uh, core, is uh, often um, a distraction and, and gets leaders doing the wrong thing. Yeah, and uh, I especially like that quote, uh, you know, that's the sort of point you just made about how culture is not an end, but it's it's a foundation. It's not a deliverable, but it's a it's something that, you know, is the, supposed to provide the basis to, you know, the way in which an organization operates. And, um, you know, I think that's actually a really good point to, uh, to close on. So, um, you know, and I, I just want to make one final comment there, yeah. because I think every, if you, if you have a mission or a story and you've got the ATPs, you literally have got to talk about it almost or refer to it almost every day. If you're not, I have an Enron cube. You're probably too uh, young to remember Enron. <laughs> uh, but, uh, on the, I have the, I have the values of the Enron cube, the vision and values of the Enron cube, integrity, 
uh, excellent, and you know, it's you know, somebody paid a lot of money to buy these stupid glass cubes to sit around. It's all just bullshit, and so. Uh, and so, if you're not living, talking about it every day as a part of everything, then forget about it. You're not going to advance your culture. In fact, you're not going to have clarity around it. So, with that, um, I really enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, and we enjoyed having you on uh, today, Lauren. So, uh, for those who are listening, uh, if you want to follow uh, Lauren and, and check out more of uh, what ATB Financial is up to, you can check them out at uh, atb.com and you can also check them out on Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, obviously uh, you can check us out uh, our Great Place to Work uh, events and all of our content at greatplacetowork.ca and Lauren you're actually going to be joining us on April the 25th for our conference so we're looking forward to having you there and uh, uh, yeah uh, hey, Lucas can I do a plug for my for my personal website which is laurenrubis.com I blog a couple times a week and also podcast so uh, there's a shameless plug at the end. <laughs> I love looking forward to being part of the Great Place to Work conference. Absolutely, yeah. No, I we're 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 open to allowing people this platform to, to talk a little bit about themselves as well. So we appreciate you uh, joining us for the podcast, and we're looking forward to to having you at the conference. Have a great day today, Lucas. See you soon. <laughs>